Hello, today I'm presenting on Mary Kay Ash from the book Snapshots of Great Leadership by John P. Howell. But before I go to discussing Mary Kay Ash, I'm going to start out by discussing my own strengths and weaknesses. I like to ask others who I believe will be willing to be honest to share their opinion as to my strengths and weaknesses as a confirmation that how I see myself is indeed the way others perceive me. And when I asked them about these strengths and weaknesses, they did tend to agree. My first strength is determination. Once I set my mind to do something, I most often will see it to completion, even if I complete it in a different manner to that which I foresaw it being accomplished. This is both in my personal life and my career. An example of this is finishing an MBA program. Although it has taken much longer than I originally anticipated, I am glad I found the right program and the timing is better now than when I first started on this path. I think determination goes along and leads to my second strength, which is my ability to be flexible. I have found this to be a good trait in helping to overcome circumstances that come my way. I lived in Israel for two years and not knowing the language taught me both perseverance and determination while being quite flexible. When you can't read or write a language, you have to be flexible in knowing you will, no, you will most likely not accomplish tasks as easily or quickly as you would have normally. Now on to my weaknesses. I know most of us would like to think we don't have any weaknesses, but in our weaknesses are our greatest potential for growth. My first weakness is that I tend to be impatient. I am much more patient now than I was when I was younger, but still have to fight with the idea that not everything is going to be done in the time or manner I believe it should be. And along with this, I occasionally have difficulty in delegating what I can do to others. I have learned through this that when I do delegate, I am able to put my attentions on more creative side of my work, and it all turns out better than if I would have tried to do it all by myself. So now on to the article from Snapshots of Great Leadership. The person I chose was Mary Kay Ash, the founder and CEO of Mary Kay Cosmetics. She was born in 1918 in Hot Wells, Texas, where she worked in sales for many years. But after being passed over for a promotion, she decided it was probably time to retire. And once she decided to retire, she thought this would be a great time for her to start her own company. And with her life savings of 5000 and the help of her 20-year-old son, Richard Rogers, Mary Kay launched her dream company on September 13, 1963, a company that would help women succeed while maintaining a healthy family life. Some highlights are that she's recognized today as America's greatest woman entrepreneur. She authored three books and received dozens of national and regional awards. The books were Mary Kay, You Can Have It All, Mary Kay Ash, Miracles Happen, and The Mary Kay Way. She had over 800,000 salespeople in 37 countries with a total revenue of over $2 billion at the time of her death in 2001. And she left a legacy of giving. She was really a giving person. She gave to individuals, to her company, and she also thought of giving to the environment and others. In 1989, became one of the first companies to enact a comprehensive recycling program, banned testing on animals, and formed the Mary Kay Charitable Foundation, all while following the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. She emphasized a caring and supportive style in managing her employees and sales force. Her company has a flat organizational structure. She provided extensive and continuous training, and she emphasized treating people fairly. She also thought that monetary reward was, was good, and she gave pink Cadillacs to those reaching specific sales goals, and it turned out to be a great motivator. I'm going to play a clip that I believe shows her style and 
shows how she was she was motivational and um i will start this clip now Becoming successful. First, plan. You have to plan. You have to know where you're going, or you'll never get to your destination. And then, persist. Persistence is so important. Yes, you're going to have little obstacles here and there, but persist no matter what. And then, third, of course, is that little four letter word work. W O R K. You know, our company was built on the foundation of the Golden Rule. Doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I hope that you will honor me by keeping that golden rule in everything that you do. And keep our philosophy of God first, family second, career third. Pretend that every single person you meet has a sign around his or her neck that says, Make me feel important. And if you can do that, it will be your secret to success, not only in business, but in life too shoot for the moon and if you don't make it you'll still be among those beautiful stars go for it go for it you can do it you can do it just do it i i liked that clip because i really thought her style came through in that short little over just over a minute clip but um and her leadership style was authentic leadership she was self-confident she had enthusiasm optimism hope determination and integrity i think this is these are qualities of a lot of great leaders and they were her strengths she also did have some weaknesses um she was known to have a short temper and was hyper focused on her goals and sometimes had conflict with others but she always made sure that her um, positive qualities her strengths overcame her weaknesses and as a link to reality i think many of us know many consultants who are still earning a supplemental income from selling mary Kay cosmetics i know one of my friends who does sell Mary Kay Cosmetics, so I thought I'd ask her why she chose this company in particular. And of course, her first answer was the quality products. She really thought that she would, wouldn't be able to sell something that she didn't truly believe in. But she also said it is because of the mission that um, Mary Kay Cosmetics has, that they really want to enrich women's lives and all the while to while keeping family first that those are really important and i think this resonates with many women because mary Kay still has more than 2.4 million independent beauty consultants around the world to this day while following their mission and staying true to what mary Kay first wanted her company to be a company enriching women's lives she had a saying say that went aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know that, so it goes on flying anyway. And I think this quote in itself really said a lot about how Mary Kay Ash was. She really believed that you just have to go and do it. You can persevere, and by feel, making others feel important and just staying true to to who you are that you can accomplish anything and so that's why I think that she was a great leader and one of the leaders in the book by John P. Howell snapshots of a great lead of great leadership and that's all I have thank you